Hey everyone, welcome back to our third and final uh, 15 for your future webinar of the year of 220. So big thanks to Joseph and Matthew for putting these together um, and then helping us helping us make this happen. So uh, what I'd love to do is just to, for you all to, to dive right in. Um, Kaylin uh, and anyone else who's joining, uh, we will uh, share a quick survey uh, that you can uh, complete and be entered into a raffle for a $10 Amazon gift card at the end of this. So we'll send that around right at the end uh, and then send around to everyone who participated afterwards. But I just want to thank Matthew and Joseph again, and uh, let's let's dive right in into 10 by 10, 10 ways to 10 times your daily productivity. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Max. And thanks, everyone, for having us again. It's great to be back for this final 15 for your future. We're excited about today's topic, which is a buzzy topic for students, especially for young professionals and professionals. We're going to dive into it with some typical strategies you might think of that and we'll get specific on those. But we also have some that aren't quite as typical as you might think that are more big picture, non-conventional, that'll make all the rest of these easier and more impactful for you and your productivity. So we'll dive into that. Uh, just as a quick intro, just in case there's anybody who hasn't been on the first couple, Joseph and I are brothers with the co-founders of a company called 220, which we started full-time back in 2015. And we started this because we wanted to create programs for students that we wish we would have had growing up, which teach students that you can create any life that you want for yourself, regardless of what limitations other people have told you you should have on your life, what careers are more practical and more responsible of you to pursue. We wanted to create something that allowed every student to maximize their passions and create a life that excites them to wake up every day because that's where Joseph and I are now, but that wasn't our straight line journey. We started out in banking and consulting because we thought that's what we were supposed to do and we're making great money. Everything was good according to everyone else's definition of success, but we were unhappy and unfulfilled. And the reason was because we knew we were passionate about entrepreneurship. And so, like we said, we wanted to create something that allowed students to not have to go through our journey and be able to create their 220 life, which stands for second to none, not settling for anything less than a life that really gets them excited to wake up every day in their work, their lifestyle, and their relationships. So along those lines, we work with partners and organizations across the country that serve students, put together online courses, and sometimes webinars on content to help students do that. And that's the one of the topics for today that's something that a lot of people ask a lot about is productivity. So we're gonna go through 10 ways to 10X your productivity and we're gonna go through them rapid fire. But at the end, we have time for questions. So anything that we go through with, that you wanna dive deeper on or anything that we didn't cover that you have questions on, let us know, but we're gonna dive right in. So number one, probably something you didn't necessarily expect to see on here but it's a necessary evil that I have tried to figure out a way around and I just can't. You have to get sleep and quality sleep and you need to get eight hours of sleep. There's just no real way around it. Otherwise, you're gonna be hurting your productivity. You're gonna think maybe you can go one, two days or you can, you're the special exception that can perform without that eight hours of sleep, but eventually it's gonna cap up, catch up to you and you're still gonna be well below what your potential is. So eight hours of sleep, super important. It's obviously gonna make you feel good, which is really important for doing your best. But the other thing is it actually allows you to perform at your best. They did a study that showed sixth graders who got one hour less of sleep than they were supposed to, so seven hours instead of eight, actually perform at a fourth grade level. So two years of cognitive maturation and development behind what they should be doing and what they would normally do on eight hours of sleep. So just think about that when you're deciding whether or not you can pull the all-nighter. And then the third, they actually have done studies that show your brain doesn't remember positive memories and positive experiences nearly as well when you don't get sleep, but you remember negative and bad experiences just fine. So you're not going to feel as good if you don't get that eight hours. So in summary, get those eight hours of sleep. Number two, also not necessarily directly tied to productivity when you think of it traditionally, but super important to exercise and eat right. Again, really important to feel good in your body and in your mind if you're gonna maximize what you're doing in your work, in school, and anything that you're working towards for your goals. So some quick tips on that. 
move every single day. Walking is a great substitute if you don't have time to maybe go to the gym or do an intense workout. But when you do have time to work out and you're maybe looking for ways to get a bigger bang for your buck, focus on shorter, more intense workouts as opposed to really long, steady state cardio. It's been shown in multiple studies and Joseph and I are living examples that you can do really short workouts and still get great results if you do them consistently. And then number three is just to have some nutrition rules for yourself. It doesn't have to be anything crazy, but for me, for example, Monday through Friday lunch, I greatly limit, I pretty much exclude sugar or simple carbs from my diet. Everything else is pretty much fair game, and that automatically puts me at 80, 85% of great eating for my body and my productivity for the week. And then on the weekends, I can relax a little bit and enjoy food like I really do, which is one of my passions. So number two, exercise and nutrition. Number three, is to know your why. This is another big picture, more non-conventional one, but if you don't have a compelling reason to be productive in the first place, it's gonna be really hard to implement a lot of these strategies. They're not gonna necessarily be meaningful and it's gonna be hard to dig up that motivation and focus and stay disciplined if you're just doing things because you're going through the motion and it doesn't have specific meaningful value to you. So you wanna focus on finding your why to be productive first. So the way we like to do that is challenge students to think about 10 years down the road, wherever you are now. So think about 2030, where do you wanna be with your life if there were no limits on it? Think about that for your work, your lifestyle and your relationships. What does that 220 seconds and on life look like where you're excited to wake up every single day? And then from there, start, you can work backwards to figure out, okay, what does that mean for me right now in the present? And that allows you to align your to-dos with that why. And all of a sudden, those to-dos can become much more high value and actually move you towards that 10-year vision, not towards some life where you go through the motions and you wake up in 2030 and you're like, I can't believe this is my life. This isn't even what I want. But one of the best ways I know to do that on a consistent basis, which was number three, aligning your current to-dos with your why, is to have some sort of centering activity every single day. And what I mean by that is you need some time, whether it's in the morning or at night or even in the middle of the day, whatever works best for you, to actually get clear, calm down your mind and focus on what's important right now and how that connects to the long term. So that can look a lot of ways. It can look like meditation. It can look like journaling. It can even look like just taking a walk or listening to your favorite song every day, but getting in the right mindset and connecting those current to do's to what your long-term goals are. Because what this does is it taps into motivation, which we all need. It's not something natural that some people have and some people don't, or some people just have stronger free will. Most people that perform well just know how to tap into this motivation by remembering, hey, these to do's, while they may not be the most exciting thing that I have this week, are really important to my long-term goal. So I can tap into that motivation. Again, like I said, it can allow you to focus on what's most important and connect those long-term goals back to my day, every single day. That's how you build towards great weeks. That's how you build great months. And eventually 10 years down the road, your 220 life. Now on your to-dos, you wanna make sure that you are focusing on the right activities. And one of the best ways to do that is the 80-20 analysis, which is based off the Pareto principle. He discovered that 20% of the world's, or 80% of the world's wealth is controlled by 20% of the world's population. But it's been discovered that this rule applies to things like sports, where 20% of the athletes win 80% of the awards, 80% of healthcare resources are only used by 20% of the population. It applies all over the place but it also applies to your productivity and your personal goals. And so what they realized is, and, and what you should realize for your productivity is that there are activities that if you focus on those specific high value activities will give you 80% of the results you're looking for. And 80% of the effort you're spending on activities that aren't as high value are only giving you 20% of the results anyway. So what your goal is, is to find out what are the highest value activities that 
if you spend time on those, will give you 80% of the results you're looking for. Spend as much time as you can on those activities. And then on the other 80% that are giving you those results, do a lot less of them, put them off and see if they come back around to be something that's in that 20% or just maybe it's time to stop doing them all together. So recognize that on your to-do list, all things are not created equal, right? Don't give all of them equal weight and ask yourself, which 20% of the activities will get me 80% of the results I want? And this applies, like we said, to all sorts of things. So you can do the same thing with things that are distracting to you. What 20% of distractions, whether that's social media or Netflix or looking for new music, or in our case, fantasy football, caused me 80% of my productivity issues. And if you can eliminate those, then your productivity will skyrocket. Now we're gonna get it a little more tactical. I would, I think Joseph would agree with me that the most valuable tool that Joseph and I use religiously is our calendar. And it's our, we both use Google Calendar, but you can use whichever digital calendar makes the most sense for you. This can govern your life and organize you faster than, than any tool that we've discovered and we've been testing a lot in our five years as entrepreneurs and before that in the corporate world. Maintaining a strict digital calendar will skyrocket your productivity. And here's an example of this week actually on my calendar. I'm using colors, I'm blocking off time for very specific activities. I'm including things like guitar practice, my sports team games, so I know when I can expect to get work done, when I'm gonna get the tasks that are most important to me done, and then when I have the time to actually relax and have fun, and when I have open free time where I can dedicate it to whatever I want, whether that's hanging out with my wife, going on a walk, uh, you know, going shopping, whatever it is that gets you excited in your free time, religiously blocking off what you have to get done will actually give you more time to have free time and we'll make sure at the same time that you're getting the things done that you need to get done. So our number one rule is to just put everything in there. You may feel like you're being excessive, but even those personal commitments, when you're leaving for you know, a trip, uh, anything that you can think of that is coming up that you need to remember, put it in your calendar. Make sure you block time for your priorities and free time. So don't just put like your classes in there or your work schedule. Make sure you block time if you're trying to develop a skill with related to your passions. Make sure that is in there and make sure it's regular time that you put in there or anything else that's high value activity that's really important to you. And then the third one, why we love digital is because it allows you to use reminders and notifications to remind you if maybe you're forgetful like me, it's really helpful to remind you if you're in a deep work session or you're doing something else that you have a call coming up or you have an important meeting or you have a deadline that you have to meet. Number seven, now we get down into the to-do list. It's some people don't love them. Some people love them. It just depends, but they're a necessary evil. Everyone needs a to-do list to make sure they know what they have to get done every single day and every single week. But there's certain things to do that, will make it more effective. The goal, and where most people get it wrong actually, is it's designed to create focus, but for a lot of people it actually overwhelms them and causes them stress. So what you wanna do is have a to-do list system that allows you to focus on what's most important for the really near term, whether that's for the day, or here's an example of my to-do list that I'm using right now for the week. So I write down everything on just one page for the week and anything else that maybe is important but isn't gonna fit into this week or that I'm just not ready for this week, that goes in a different system. That's called your intray. So these are ideas that maybe it's just not time for yet, but you need to have some sort of filing system where you can just say, okay, I'm gonna come back to that later so that you don't completely forget about it. This is great for uh, you know actual tasks or schoolwork or work things you have to do, but it's also great for you know ideas that you have that you wanna come back to later, but that's just not the right time. So for example, pen and paper for my to-do list, but for my intro is a free tool called Trello, which is a really, really great tool that I, I love. Uh, but it doesn't matter what you use necessarily, but having that distinction of a to-do list and then an intro or something that's tabled for later ideas will help you tremendously. And then number eight, time chunking. So this is one of the other tools that I think has been most valuable since I've become an entrepreneur, where basically if you look at your calendar and you say, okay, 
you know, if you look at this Friday for me, this purple EI LMS work. So this is a big project that I'm working on. What this means is this is a big chunk of time I've allotted myself. So during this time, I am ultra focused on just getting this thing done. It's not time for me to, you know, just check and open my email and get distracted there or open social media or get down a YouTube rabbit hole or, or oh, I'll, I'm going to see what's on Netflix or just have something distracting in the background. This is ultra focused time. And so when you do this on your calendar, it allows you to get deep, meaningful work done because a lot of people assume productivity is always about getting more things done, but productivity in the truest sense is actually about getting the most important things done. And a lot of times you need un uninterrupted extended time to do that because you have to think, you have to be creative and you have to develop things to a point where it's high quality, not just quantity of things that you're cranking out. So with time chunking, it's super helpful to eliminate distractions. For me, I can't even listen to music with words on it. I, I, got, I got to have instrumental music because it'll, it'll distract me. So know what distracts you. If you need to, cut off the internet and Wi-Fi. Work totally offline. Uh, if you know yourself, but just eliminate those distractions. Another thing, Google has a free timer. If you just type in timer, you can actually give yourself, you know, 30 minutes to work all out and then take a little break so that your mind gets refreshed and five minute break, get up, get some water, and then come back to it and, and do it again and repeat. So that's one of the most important strategies that we've discovered as entrepreneurs and applies to just about anything you want to do is time chunky. So our ultimate goal with productivity, I like to think of it as building great days, but the way that you build a great day is you actually have to start the night before. And that's why an evening routine is so important. We have to get sleep, right? That's, that's number one on our list of 10, 10 by 10 for your productivity. But to do that, you want to make sure that you get to bed at the right time and that your sleep is really high quality. So the way that you do that is you set a bedtime and, you, and you're consistent with it. So, you know, maybe on the weekends it slips a little bit and you, you stay up a little later, you sleep in a little bit, that's totally fine. I actually do that. Uh, I think Joseph does too. But during the week or on the days when you actually have work and need to be productive, set a bedtime and be consistent with it. it, it whatever bedtime allows you to get eight hours and wake up at the right time, that's the bedtime you should set and stick to it. And when that bedtime is approaching, it's really really recommended to give yourself an hour to wind down because otherwise if you work right up until the the time when you're going to put your head on the pillow or if you're even checking social media right or, or watching a crazy show right before you put your head on the pillow it's going to take your time it's going to take your mind time to wind down and then that's when people get frustrated they they lie awake and then they actually end up getting stressed that they're not falling asleep maybe they get up and actually try to do something to make them that so it, it's a cycle that eventually leads to either sleeping in or not getting enough sleep. So that's why it's so important to take some time to wind down. And then when you do actually hit the pillow, the most important things that I have learned and Joseph and I have learned, and we, we, we laugh about this because we're super strict about it now, but temperature, light, and sound. You want the highest quality sleep you can get so that when you are asleep, you wake up and feel refreshed and are your maximum self. So make it cold. There's studies that show that the colder it is, the better you sleep and you, like being hot will wake you up. And, and I can fully attest to that. Uh, the less light, the better. So if you have curtains, shut them off. Don't leave the TV on. I know some people think you should. Science says that you should not. And then for sound, maybe you need a little bit to make your mind turn off and fall asleep. Like I listen to an audio book to fall asleep, but I have a sleep timer on it. So make the best environment possible for you to get high quality sleep. And then when we actually get to the day, your morning routine is important. Starting your day the same way or close to the same way when you do have those productive work or school days is going to maximize and get you in the right mindset where you are able to not only start the day well, but get your most important things done first. And that's why a powerful morning routine is so important. So, for me, for example, right now, I wake up, I brush my teeth, I make a hot lemon water for my digestive system, I come in, I do stretching, I journal a little bit, and then I make coffee and a green shake, and I come in, and then I get my most important work done for the day. And I don't take any meetings or phone calls in the morning. So that, for me, 
is my morning routine that I've had for several months now and it's working really well. But there are thousands and thousands and, and thousands of variations of morning routines that people use depending on what works best for them, their schedule, who they are and what they're trying to get done. So just try some things out. It it's, could look totally different for you what works best, but just try some things out. And then when you do get to something that works, be consistent with it and try it out for a little while and be disciplined so that you give it time to actually produce results. So you got to be consistent with it for a little while before you actually can see the benefits. Don't just assume that, you know, one day doesn't go perfectly well and, and all of a sudden that morning routine shot. And again, number three, use the morning if you can to get your most important things done. It's a hard lesson to learn, but if you can knock that out, the rest of your day feels so much better. And actually, a lot of times you'll find out that the things that you were planning on doing later that day may not even be necessary anymore if you get that most important thing done first. And then last is a bonus. None of these are gonna work to their maximum ability if you're not honest with yourself about your own productivity and your personal goals. So you have to be honest with yourself about how productive you're being when you're trying to, or if you're trying to implement these techniques, are you doing the best you can? Are you actually off of social media? Are you not checking your fantasy football app? These are all things that you have to challenge yourself and be honest with. Otherwise, you're going to always justify why you're not being as productive as you should with some external excuse and you're not gonna be able to fix the problems that allow you to be your best self and get the most important things done in less time, which is what productivity is all about. So for us, every topic, we wanna to make sure that we don't just throw content at you, but we actually give you a chance to apply this so that it sticks and you can see benefits from it as soon as possible. Like we said, this was number six. Our digital calendar for us has been the most valuable tool that we've had as entrepreneurs. So we're gonna challenge you to actually do that for yourself. Maybe you have a system, but what we want you to do, even if you already have a calendar system you like, is to watch this YouTube video, and Joseph will paste this in the chat, but watch this YouTube video. It's a quick walkthrough, it's like two and a half minutes. It just shows you some examples of how to create and implement a lot of the strategies that we just covered in this training. And if you stick to this calendar system and, and adjust to whatever works best for you, but if you stick to that and stay organized, you will get th more things done, you'll get more of the important things done, you won't miss deadlines. You won't forget about appointments. You'll be super reliable and responsible and ultimately achieve your goals faster and more easily than you would otherwise. So I would challenge every single person on the call or anybody that's watching the recording to watch that YouTube video and use it to either enhance your existing calendar or to start fresh and create your own new calendar system. And that is is 10 ways to 10X your productivity. If anybody has any questions on things we covered in the training or anything that you've experienced that you wanna ask a question about or, or just anything related to productivity, we would love to answer that. Awesome, thanks Matthew and thanks Joseph. And of course, you know, we, we open it up for questions either in the chat or uh, you know, just wanna unmute yourself. I did drop into the chat also the link for any students on uh, that complete this survey about um, their participation in these webinars, just to give us a little bit of feedback. Uh, you can earn uh, or be entered in a raffle for an Amazon gift card. Uh, sorry, at most you staff, you do not apply uh, to that. Um, but unless anyone else, uh, you know, I, I'll give a second for, for students to have questions, but I, I do have a question that I want to throw in there, but I don't want to go first unless a, if a student wants to go. All right, then I'll throw mine out there. So uh, this is kind of a, a two uh, a two part question. So talking about the the, the eighty twenty rule um, from from you guys' perspective, uh, you know, because you both uh, are entrepreneurs, but have spent a lot of time working with students. So um, when working with students, what are some of the things that you've seen as the twenty percent efforts that have maybe contributed to the eighty percent outcomes? And then you as entrepreneurs, you know, without giving away the secret sauce of what it makes 220 great, uh, you know, what are the 20% efforts that have resulted in the 80% outcomes for you guys? And, you know, if any students want to share what, what their 
inputs have resulted in, in outcomes. Feel free to share that too. Joe, do you want to take that or you want me to? Yeah, I, th I think the one that I, I always think about reflecting on the work we do with students, but also thinking back to my time in high school and college, especially, uh, I feel like it, it's actually kind of funny because I, I think the 20% is paying attention in class and taking good notes because I, I would go to class and I would kind of listen, but then assume that I could, you know, read my textbook or study and cram before the exam when that forced me to relearn all the material. And so if I would have, you know, really been dialed in when I was in class and spent that chunk of time really learning and making sure I understood all the concepts, then studying would have been a lot less stressful and I wouldn't have had to put so much emphasis on cramming. And when you're in college, as, as people on this call know, it feels like your tests always land on the same week. So then you have two or three exams where you have to really cram and you have to really focus and that leads to bad sleep. And so for me, looking back and on the semesters I did really well, I was always paying attention in class, taking really good notes, 100% attendance in class. And it's not just to turn in assignments, it was more to really learn the material instead of just memorizing what I needed to know to do well in the exams. Yeah, I would agree with that. And then when you when I got into college, especially in the later years, what I realized is if I could just stay on track with the schedule, like given to me by my professors with the syllabus, like doing the readings on time, doing the homework and turning things in on time, it, it would be like Joseph said, when you get to those test weeks, like if you're not caught up, you're going to be pulling those all nights, which I, I did. But on, on the times where I did really well, and what, what we've seen with students that do really well, is they have like a dedicated time every single day where even if they're someone who loves to party, they know how to take themselves away, go to the library for three, four hours every day, get everything done that they need to get done so that they've got the readings that up to date, they've got anything and any assignments or lessons they're supposed to learn on their own up to date, and then they can do whatever else they want to do in college. And that's, you know, going to be the same for the real world. Um, you know, procrastination is, is just something that a lot of people struggle with, but especially for students, I feel like that is such a key. And that's something that we stress to everybody. And so that's why a lot of these tools that we went over today are so important to actually keep yourself on track uh, for, for school. Uh, and then related to 220, uh, I think it's, we, we definitely went through some lessons that we probably didn't have to if we were a little smarter about, uh, you know, exploring resources that were already out there that we maybe didn't know existed or asking for more help. Uh, but some of the funny stuff that most people think is super important, you know, is like your, the name of your company, the logo, the colors, the marketing, you know, even the perfect website. Like we always thought that was going to be, per, you know, the social media, we always thought that was what was going to be perfect. But really when it comes down to it, you, you can't have a company if you don't have something that can help solve people's problems. And so what we realized is re investing time into the development of really high quality content and products that actually help people in doing whatever they, whatever you can to actually help them succeed with that is going to take care of 80 to 90% of what you, what you want to get done anyway. And then the marketing and all of that, it'll develop your first iteration of everything. And this goes for everything, not just companies. We've seen it with blog posts, but it goes for anything, a, a, a recipe you're trying to make, a, a, a painting you're trying to like any, any first iteration and, and not even first iteration for that matter, but as you go along, right, you're just always going to be getting better if you keep putting time into it. So you can't worry about putting out something that's perfect because otherwise you're never going to put it out or you're going to be way behind or way more stressed or way too slow than what you actually could be if you just focus on the most important activities. And so for us, that's definitely been the quality of content and just making sure that we have something that can actually help people. Yep, agreed. Yeah, the only other detrimental activity that I find myself doing is like reading every word of every email and spending three hours in my inbox thinking that's really productive time because I'm, I'm in my, you know, company and business email 
spending time doing that and organizing it in folders and all that. And, and really that's, that's kind of just shuffling, you know, and spinning my wheels where I could be doing more meaningful activities. So email and social media and website design, I think those have probably been our three biggest uh, 80% of time wasters that probably haven't led to the growth and the progress that we would have liked to have seen. Great. Thanks guys. Yeah. Uh, st we still have a little bit more time for questions. So Ladarius, uh, Kaylin, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat or, or unmute yourself. Um, but just a reminder that that link for the survey is there in the chat as well. And this, if there's any, we went through 10 things pretty quick and it, it, we didn't quite even get it in 15 minutes, but if there's anything that, you know, you want to go back and revisit, we'll have this uh, recording uh, produced and uploaded so you can rewatch it. Uh, and then definitely, like I said, check out the challenge that we have for you, which is on the, the YouTube video to either enhance your existing calendar or start a new one and, and input religious practices and discipline into maintaining that calendar. Great. And uh, in the chat, it looks like Kaylin has a question. So Kaylin, feel free to type it or unmute yourself now. What would be some helpful advice for procrastination and why? Um, so, Kaylin, I would say that a lot of the things we talked about today are definitely good pieces of advice for that. Uh, the ones that I would focus on are the digital calendar. I think one of the most valuable pieces of the digital calendar is that not only do you know what is coming up today or maybe what's coming up tomorrow, but you can actually see if you are putting everything in your calendar all your test dates, all your deadlines, all your big work events, any forms you have to submit, anything like that, you can start to see it ahead of time and say, okay, wow, I have a really light week this week, but next week I have four tests. Like I need to spend a lot of time this week because I'm not going to have time next week studying and getting ready for those tests. But the same thing could go for anything beyond school. I think that's one of the most important features of the calendar is being able to see what's ahead and adjust your schedule accordingly. And, you know, the other thing is to just be honest with yourself about, okay, if I know that like these deadlines are coming up, have I done everything that I need to do or being honest about how much time do I realistically need to spend to not just check the box, but do this thing that's really important to me really well. And that will inform how much time you need to spend on in your calendar and ded dedicate in your calendar to that specific activity. So I would say that the digital calendar is actually probably the best advice for procrastination I could give. The to-do list and the in-tray and all that will definitely help you manage it. But it really is about putting in those great days, which is all the tips we talked about. But that calendar is what's really going to help you see what's coming up and avoid procrastination. So put everything in there. Like I said, don't, don't think you're putting too much in your calendar, like be religious about it. Google calendar is great. We love it because we get to use all these different colors and uh, it, it just allows you to like see things visually really quickly, use all day events so that you can see things coming up really far in advance, uh, even in like a monthly view. Um, so those are just some of the strategies, but I guess in summary, I would say the calendar is probably going to be your best tool for procrastination. Yep. And, th and the other thing I would add there, uh, Kaylin, is I feel like when I procrastinate most, it's because I look at that item or those items on my to-do list and think that's going to be really hard or that's going to be something that I don't really feel like tackling right now. So I push it off and I go back to my inbox or I go back to whatever was distracting me in the first place. And so the strategy that Matthew talked about earlier with using a timer is actually something that I've started to use more and more over the last year and just say, okay, even if this is what feels like a task that's gonna take me all day to do, I'm just gonna put 20 minutes on a timer, put my phone away and focus exclusively on that task. And there are times where it's felt like it's gonna take me all day, but I'll get the task done 
in that dedicated 20 minute session. So if you feel like you're procrastinating on things because they just feel like they're too cumbersome or they're going to take too long or you don't have enough time, just put 20 minutes on your phone timer or on a computer timer and say, I'm just going to do this for 20 minutes. And you'll be surprised how much progress you make and how much better you feel afterwards. Because at the end of that timer, sometimes you'll actually end up being like, oh, well, I guess I'm almost done now. So I'll just put another five or 10 minutes on the timer and then you'll have it knocked out. So think about what Matthew talked about in terms of getting the right things on your to-do list. And then if you still feel like you're going to procrastinate on those activities, just say, I'm just going to try to work on that for a set period of time. And the and last thing that you reminded me of just too is, is this number three, which is get your most important things done first. So do them in the morning or the first time you have an opportunity that day to with an un, uninterrupted extended block. So just use the timer, use your calendar, but get those things done first, even though like Joseph said, they may be the things that you wanna put off because it's gonna require more effort. But that probably also means, not always, but it probably also means that that's one of the most important things you have to get done. So knocking that out will make everything else easier. Great, question. Great point about the use of the timer. Um, what is it, the, the Pomodoro uh, method where you, it's like 25 minutes un, you know, focused, uninterrupted, five minute break, 25 again, and that's how you can kind of cram through your, your list. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, you'll be surprised. It's just crazy with our phones, how much time we spend getting distracted with our notifications and with our phone lighting up. And I mean, all the stuff that happens where you just get pulled away from something. If you can, if you can dedicate set periods of time, even 10 or 15 minutes, I mean, it doesn't have to be 20 or 30. Um, you'll be surprised how much you can get done in that, in that what seems like short period of time. Well, that's a second bonus tip for everybody. Uh, thanks for sticking on with this. Uh, turning off your social media notifications, you, you will be amazed at, because those apps, I don't know if anybody's watched The Social Dilemma yet, the documentary on Netflix, but highly recommend, but not getting too much into that. These apps are designed to get you back on if you're not on there. And so these notifications aren't always going to be valuable information. It's not always going to be that you were tagged in a post, right? It's, and even if you were tagged in a post, you can see it a little bit later after you've finished your most important thing. So I know that might sound crazy to some people, but it is a really, really helpful thing to do when you're trying to be productive is to not get distracted by notifications and get interrupted because a lot of that important work, like we said, you need that uninterrupted extended time. And if you see that notification, it can, take you out of that focus. And it's hard once you're really out of focus to get back in if you're trying to do deep creative work or deep studying. So my challenge, another challenge for you would be to turn off those social media notifications and even play with it if you only need to turn them off during the heavy work time, that's okay. But uh, you can turn on do not disturb on your phone, uh, but just uh, test that out. And I, I'd be amazed. I'd be surprised if, if you didn't see a big big increase in your productivity in those times. And I want to say that uh, Kaylin and uh, Marion use their time very well because I already have a survey submitted by them. So they're clearly uh, working on their most important tasks uh, <laughs> there. Um, but, you know, if, if there are any other questions, uh, feel free to, to share them with us. Otherwise, I really appreciate it, Matthew and Joseph. Thank you so much for this session and uh, all the other ones for, you know, throughout the fall here. Thank you, Max. These have been a blast. Uh, definitely a, a different format for us to, to really, you know, focus on 15 minutes, but it's gonna, been a great challenge and a lot of fun. And, and uh, hopefully everybody's enjoyed them and got some positive things out of them. Awesome. Well, well, thanks, guys. And uh, to, to everyone else on here, uh, Matthew and Joseph will be sharing the links to the recordings here and the, and the tool um, for, for organizing your calendar. And of course, we will share that out uh, over email as well. So everyone has that. Awesome. All right. Well, if you didn't ask a question now, uh, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we'll, uh, Max can forward along our contact info if you don't already have it. But uh, once you go through a program with us, we consider you part of the 220 family. So if you need anything at all, uh, help with anything, reach out. And we, we'd love to help. Great. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks, everyone, for joining.